Oh yeah, can we hear this? Can we hear the tune, Steve? Yes. Okay. Let's get these tunes at a level then where you can hear me over them, alright? Right, it is Christmas time. Let's bring it down. Okay, can we hear that? Alright. 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 I'm like a DJ now. Let's get on with the debrief. I'm going to put the tunes in the background like that because that's what streamers do and I don't really watch too many streamers. Here in front of us, we have TacView. Now, I use TacView for... Uh, sounds fine. <laughs> I don't know how I'm doing this, but it's great. Anyway, TacView then is this thing here and I'll bring the sound down a little bit more. So it's on the background. I debrief using TacView. Okay, um, I'm actually using OBS for the stream now. Shadowplay was being a bit of a dick, and I must admit, I'm not the most um, au fait with this. What you can see here, though, is the new school map. Okay, hey there, John. And the school was designed by one of our students. It took him a couple of hundred hours. I'll point out different areas in the school. Uh, I'm not actually using DCS today, pretty much. I'm using uh, TacView just because I've got the whole TacView tape. I tend to debrief a lot from TacView, as you can see. Now, this is yesterday afternoon sortie. So, yesterday afternoon, I do a 3 p.m. sortie. I'm wearing a sheep. I'm sorry it matches the beard. It wasn't intentional. And if you hear any barking, there's a border terrier downstairs on loan from my wife's parents. I don't know much about dogs. Um, okay. Let's have a look, shall we? So, we are based out of Nellis, as we know here. And yesterday, I had three students flying, all doing some close air support work. I'll bring you up some close air support stuff. By the way, guys, if um, the music is annoying, tell me to get rid of it, and I'll just drop the whole music thing. I'm just streaming from Epidemic Sounds. And I, I think I might have a link for those somewhere, you know, trying to work out what's going on. Right, we've got some merchandise as well on the channel. I'm putting more into that as well. Um, right, Nellis, here. So my students come on. I think there was three of them in the end. Let's um, just get them to form here. So we always try and debrief. They taxi out. We do tell them, uh, obviously, what runway we're using. We use a lot of wind on the server as well. So they come out onto the runway there. I do all the comm for them, air traffic and stuff like that. Come on. Yeah, got like that. There we go. I'll tell you what's interesting. Maybe it doesn't work so well when there is like, voices in the music. Maybe the, the stream should be, you know what I mean? Just so we try and find a different stream. Let's just go for, I don't know, whilst we're doing this, uh, let's go for Discover. If you ever do any stream work or anything like that, or any music, all the videos you hear have got copyright stuff from Epidemic Sound, so I pay out for that so I get some stuff. Uh, so we're going to go for a, what should we do? Um, let's go for music for a stream. Stream, stream music. Uh, gaming EDM for Twitter. Can't go wrong with that, can we? 20 tracks. Let's try that. Oh, exec. No, we've got to play this whole thing. Game EDM for Twitter. Right, here we go. Oh, it's all this kind of weird stuff, in it? You see on Twitch and stuff. We'll go with it. We'll roll with that. Okay, roll VT on some background stuff. So what we get then, three guys come in. Uh, we've got Night Garter, Phil, and uh, Mark here. I've got Mark in an F-18. I've got, obviously, Finn, uh, Phil here in an F-5, and then a Night Garter in an F-18. They can take whatever they want. The idea being that I'm teaching them how to drop on targets on the CAS range. The CAS range is all over the map. It's uh, pretty much all these red targets here. You can see these, and they're containers. So they don't shoot back at anyone, and it allows us in the NTTR, which is a huge range complex. We've got 59 different ranges here. You can see them all laid out. Each one of these range, ranges has a card as well. So in your jet, in your kneeboard, you have a card, and you can... Um, yeah, I'm going to DJ a bit harder, I think, because I think people want some music. There we go. Oh, now it's on. Now we've got those squeaky noises that all the kids love. It shows my age. Um, I was going to kick off and it. It's going to be a massive drop in a second. There we go. There's a drop. Drop it like it's not that hot. Up here, Rangers, we've got other aircraft up around the north here. We've, If you drop in, uh, for example, there's a party tonight. I'll just leave it there. Leave it there. I've got to get someone to do it for me. And I'll probably take guys up to Tonopah or anything like that and all the other aircraft are all over the map so we can jump in. Anyway, it's pretty brutally big. We're doing the same with the Caucasus for the Primo course. Um, don't think about this as me teaching people to fly. Don't tell my students this. This is about mental health. This is about therapy, guys, all right? I'm, I'm not even joking. Everything I do in here, I've taken from a spin recovery course, and I put it into here, and I'm using the aircraft as a medium of helping people out that are going through difficult times, which in a, in a, fence is, in a, in a sense is everyone, really, because, of course, we've gone through, what, COVID. We've got the whole LGBT push culture that we this is a bit odd isn't it the what is it um post-liberalist progressive culture that i i don't really understand 
So these guys are going to get airborne. They're going to go out to targets. Now let me see if I can get the targets for you. And I'm going to use this one here to go. Ah, I got it. Yeah. Now we've all over this now. I use a Dropbox. We use Discord. And I'll do one on the whole Discord at some point and how we run Discord. But there's a lot now in the school, as I'm sure you're aware. I'll go into my close air support and I'll get the window up on this one now. And I'll show you. In fact, I might be able to just use a monitor to do that. Stand by. No, that's the wrong one. Right, center. That's the one there, top. Yes, I am. Okay, good stuff. I'll go back and look at your comments now. So we've got the cards up. You see now they use them. And uh, so I will play Slade, thank you. You know Slade's coming in a minute, Mark. It's going to happen, all right? Have we got audio still? I think we've got audio. Hopefully you have. T-Fam. Okay. Let's go into the flight itself then so the three guys get airborne i spoke to erin o'reilly i've been on email with this guy that write that actually writes the software here i'm just going to put ta uh, dump into one and i'm going to put flynn into another you can see they're connected now um we'll get airborne in we'll do three times and so mark's going to go once he gets airborne if you want to change between these two between mark and flynn all you do is press that button there apparently it's quite clever it just then prioritizes the other aircraft so if I'm currently on him, but I'm like, oh, I want to see what the other aircraft's doing. I just press that. I never knew that. Yeah, he actually told me how to do that. Uh, the guy who made TAC view. So I'm learning. You know, that's a great thing. I learn a lot from this as well. Obviously, they're all going different targets. It's a very individual-centric mission, Kaz. So the main thing about it is, is that Mark asked me to review this tape for him because he wanted to know whether his dive angle was correct. Now, we try and get a dive angle. We try and get a weapon solution with a pass height, a release height, forward throw with a bomb. With the F5 that Flynn's in here, for example... Uh, we're going three times here, just out to the range complex. His one was out to the north, guys. Uh, he's going to have to use the dive tables that come with the F5. Now, you can find dive tables for F5. But what we have to do sometimes, because of the way the modeling is done on DCS, is I have to do a lot of work outside of the school. Take an F5, hit the range, know the target elevation, uh, know my pass height elevation and the dive angle and the weapon I'm using. And I actually then will sort of, I will kind of adjust the millage, the milli radians, the depression that the site has to be down in order for the forward, from, uh, forward throw of the bomb to impact the target. And we're going to see an application of that today, but we are actually going to primarily not look at F5 today. We're going to look at Mark in his F18. Um, so there's actually, as I said, here he is here. Now, I think he's diving in because I think, oh no, yeah, he's diving there. This is an interesting one. She's one times on this. The main thing was I was teaching them was about dive angle if you're going in for a 20 degree dive there's reasons you might do 20 and reasons you might do 30 degrees and that's that really is to be the, if you're if you're going down 90 degrees um for example my little hawk here so if you think about 90 degrees to the target your bomb is going to be super accurate because it's going straight down into the target you know basically that's where the bomb is going to go you know it's going to be accurate so if we then do more less 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 and we let say a bomb go when we're level well we have a much wider area where that bomb could impact because a lot of things are going to affect it the wind is a massive one that's going to affect it any roll is going to affect the release of that bomb it's going to throw it left or right any pitch and what a lot of my students are doing is not trimming out in the dive so we're getting established in the dive as the aircraft accelerates though it'll want to recover from the dive so we might need to just put a couple of blips nose down or maybe nose up depending on how the aircraft set up and we need to do that every pass because as bombs come off, they weigh quite a lot and the whole weight of the aircraft is going to change, isn't it? So that's what it is. Uh, audio's back. Great. Okay, thank you for that, Armax. It's very kind of you. 
don't know why the audio's not working. If I knew how to stream, I need to get an au pair in, don't I, just to do my streams for me. Um, apparently you've got to have kids. Right, so a lot of small arms students are doing this at release, okay? Not, that's exacerbated, but of course the bomb is then being thrown long or short of the target area. And that's what we're trying to stop. So we're trying to trim out in the dive as best we can. Trim, watch the speed coming up, modulate the power, bring the throttles back, hold it, release on speed and on the correct dive angle. And then we should get a pretty good bomb. Now with CCIP, that's not that important because a constantly calculated impact point, such as in the Hornet, we pretty much, as long as we put that pipper over the target, the bombs kind of go there, going to go there because the inertial navigation system in the aircraft is taking into account wind and everything else. So we're quite lucky. But in the F5, that bomb could be turbo shagged. It could go anywhere. You know what I mean? It's just That's the thing. And I've lost bombs. Like the bomb, didn't see, drop. Yeah, it, I dropped it, mate. I don't know where that bomb went. I lost one in North America once. I lost the Paveway 2. And it's, a, it's the way... It's to do with the way the tornado was set up of handing the target information to the to the bomb itself. It wasn't lazy, it was GPS guided. There were three of us dropping and two of us selected the late arm after the AGM button had been pressed. Because that's how you would have thought it worked out. You would never make a late arm unless you're ready to commit the weapon to the battlefield. There was one crew there who did it the wrong way around. They got their checks wrong and they actually made their late arm, i.e. their the thing the last thing you're going to do before you drop the safety switch they made the late arm first he made it really early because he didn't want to forget and when the navigator pressed the agm air to ground missile button sending the data from the aircraft to the bomb it got to the bomb the other two including the boss and i we didn't do it properly the boss I think was mike wigston who's now chief air staff well we know he did it properly we did it properly we did it properly but those bombs went somewhere and they were never seen again so in the range complex he hopes but yeah, never saw those bombs again. Don't know where they went. Could be anywhere. And they were live. That was a live drop. Um, allegedly, my lawyer says. So what we're we looking at, and we're looking at dump going down a hill here. So let's just go back a bit. One thing we do teach them is how to get that 30 degree dive then. So we say, put your wingtip on the target. So the targets are some crates down there and the targets aren't marked on this, which is an interesting, oh, there's the targets there. Oh, he's tipping in already, sorry. The targets are marked on this. So he flies around in a big circle around the target at a set speed of about 360 knots and he puts his wingtip onto the target there you see now i don't think tacv will give me an angle to this i don't think it does give me an angle um it gives me a bearing but i don't think it gives me a depression if i'm correct let's have a look uh, aspect angle rate close relative bearing no it doesn't but i don't really need that anyway but what i can see from his cockpit i'll go back a little tiny weeny bit i can see what his actually let's have a look so can't really see what that is. What is that? Probably, that's about 30 degrees. Look, 32 degrees, probably. So he's got about 32 degrees angle of bank turn, and that's what the JTAC would say to him. Mate, I want a 30 degree bomb, please, a 30 degree dive. The steeper the dive, potentially the faster the weapon, the more, um, obviously, the more accurate the weapon is as well, and obviously the higher the impact angle. So if you're going for armor, which I believe he was, obviously it's crates in the desert, containers in a desert, but if you're going for armor, then there's every chance you may be able to get that bomb penetrating through the top of the armour. Tanks aren't really armoured on the top because nothing's supposed to be shooting at them, are they? And they're very notoriously difficult to hit, which is obviously a bonus for Brimstone or something like that, isn't it? Because Brimstone comes in from the above. I know I'm limited on this stream because the sun's coming across, and I'm going to be doing this a lot, and I? like, I'm going to be doing this like this as it comes across before we be blinded. So he's got his 30-degree dive angle, we think. His eyes on target, and now he tips in. He's going to pull towards it. His speed's come off a little bit, but we'll watch it. So he pulls towards now. We need to see that nose coming down a little bit to get that dive angle. I think he's still going around the circle. He's building a bit of speed. And he's quite high, 17. Remember, these targets in the NTTR here are high up. This one's probably about three or 4,000 feet up. So four containers in the desert. I should That nose should be coming down now, by all means. If he's just going to point at it and then nose over, then that's not the correct technique to use. But we'll see. That is a valid technique, though. You just wait for it to come down. So right now, he's selecting a, an aim off. And I'll show you what that means. He wants to put his velocity vector along with the target. Now, if he puts his velocity vector along with the target, that sets an aim off. But he knows, I think, that he's going to be shallow. If you put the velocity vector just above the target here, probably about a kilometre away, what's a kilometre look like? And that is a difficult thing to judge. Then that will set a pass height. If he puts his velocity vector on the target, he will never get a weapon solution because he's going to fly directly into the target. The velocity vector shows you where you're going to end up. And that's why we use it like that for landing. You put it on the runway and we land on the runway. But he's put it on there. Now I think he's trying to adjust here because if we're shallow, we shallow. So technically, he's at 20 degrees, not 30. It was a bit of a, it was a bit of a meh tipping, wasn't it? We do sometimes get some students flying 
the aircraft as if they're airline pilots. In fact, we actually got some airline pilots in here, so they're probably doing it for a reason. So he's set 15 degrees now. That's a 15 degree bomb. Not 30 degree, not a 20 degree, 15 degrees. Let's see if he holds that figure as he comes down the hill. We, we got it on now. Look at this. We're, we're dancing. This is like Shadowlands radio or some, some shit going on now. It's, this is great. I should make some shapes, shouldn't I? So we should know when he releases because something will come off the jet. Uh, so 360 is a bit of a slow release, but it's a good... I mean, look at the pitching here, you see. The pitching up and down. I think what he's seen at the last moment, very early on, that he was shallow. So he, he's 20 degrees. I mean, look at the pass height on this is going to be not good. There's the bomb. So the pass height's going to be low. Now, of course, the issue being, he'll be being shot at here from the target. He's only 4,000 feet. He's probably going to pass at it over it very high. 4G to release. I mean, the bomb should be reasonably effective. Yeah, as you can see, it is. Because it's CCIP, but it's not a great pass. So we'll have a look at another one. And also, get your tail up. Get away from the ground. People are going to try shooting at you. So don't bother turning until you're at least like, sorry, don't bother turning at least you're until, like 60 degrees nose up. Now turn, all right? 60 degrees, now turn. Get away from the ground, okay? Look over your shoulder. Look out for that um, infrared missile coming up, okay? So we've got to get good height. 16,000, we've got nothing wrong with that. 420 is a bit of a waste of fuel. Sit at 360 because your build speed down the dive. I think that's him tipping in again. Let me just go back one. So these are weapons events down here, I believe. So I see what's happening here. We're pulling level. So we're pulling level and then we're letting the nose drop and that's not an efficient way to do it. Pull the nose down onto the target, roll out with your velocity vector just above it, just, just above it, by about a kilometre away, okay? So what I'd say now is, is he's got, the target is at 25 degrees, right? The target, yeah, not a business jet, nor can, that's right. Yeah, that's how you fly a business jet like this. Um, you shouldn't actually, crikey, imagine that, you lose customers, wouldn't you? So... 25 degrees is where the target's at right now for, for what I think is a 30 degree, 30 degree. But I think he might be going for 20 degree, and this is why he's steepening. Um, he might say 25 degrees is steep, so I steepen. And that's very important to remember that. If we're shallow, we're shallow. If we steep, we steepen. All right, we steepen. And I'll show you a diagram while that is in a second. So let's look. By steepening, he's actually got a, less of a dive angle, but he doesn't really hold it there. Let's have a look. 20 degrees. I'm going to have a look at Night Guard's tape in a minute. Just because I think there might be a bit of a difference. And as we can see, 20 degrees, we're rolling in. Keep the wings level, trim it out. Because this whole bouncing up and down business, now he's 25 degrees. So he's steepening, because I think he thinks he's steep. But it's too late to do it this, this this way in. I mean, you want to do it much earlier. Do it at the initial point. Once you've tipped in, bang, assess, correct. Okay? And at this stage, you want to just, I mean, he'll be flying into the target. He will fly into the target like that. Bomb's gone, but you don't want to be down. You've got to take an aim off that's further away than that. And it's a judgment call. The aim off should be out here somewhere, all right, to give you a decent pass height. So we'll do one more of these, and we'll look at the other guy's one. So we need to get that nose up a lot more. Back into the pattern. Round we come. There's the next release there. So again, we'll just do one more. Tipping in. Yeah, it's this whole, I'm tipping in level, and then I'm dropping my nose. Just go oblique. Go oblique. Okay, set the pass height. Modulate the power. I mean, 200 knots is too slow. It's too slow. You can't react to any launch of anything. You need to be 360 up there at least. 300 if you're pretty high. 300 if you're pretty high. Um, now you can... So you could... Uh, exactly. Okay, so you know he's got better pass height here. But look, there's a lot of rocking around. I mean, we don't want the velocity vector on the target because that's what you will fly into. So we need to set a pass distance. I'd put the velocity vector on the 25 degree line there and accept that approach. I'd accept a 25 degree drop. But I think he's thinking to himself, I'm going to try that steepening thing. But it's too late at this stage to do that. So what I mean by that steepening thing is if we go back a little bit here, when he first presents to the target, okay, first presents to the target, bang. Right, now we can do some work. We've presented to the target, now we can do some work. It needs to be done now. There's a lot of issues with this. Speed, I'm not even looking at it, but I know the speed is in error. 250 knots. That's how you die, okay? You've got a lot of weight on that jet. Keep that power up then. That should be, that should be around about 400 now to drop maybe... I think in a Hornet, 360 seems to be a reasonable speed from what I can gather in the manuals for the Hornet because that's the Hornet's best rate speed, really. Uh, and you want to be able to rate that, getting away from that, that ground if you possibly can. Um, whereas in the, uh, the little F5, that's a great airplane, by the way, 450 is a better drop speed because the rate speed for a, an F5 is about 400 knots, all right? So let's have a look. Um, so here is where you would correct. You'd look at this and you'd go, how are the tunes going? Oh, we're doing all right. You'd um, you'd look at this. You say, right, that's 30 degrees. The target is at 30 degrees. I now to now need to now set an aim off, and you set your aim off around about here, 
and then you say, I'm in a 25 degree dive. I'm in a 25 degree dive and I want to be in a 30 degree dive. That means I'm shallow because I'm 25 degrees, not 30. I will shallow. I'm shallow, so I will shallow. I'd bring that nose up, probably like 10 degrees, give it a couple of bananas. What happens with that is the target moves down the screen, it moves down the screen until you get to uh, where the 30 degree bar comes up here, then you reset. Okay, and I think we're going to see that, but not here. I think he's, no, he's steepening. So if anything, it's just going to exacerbate the issue. We'll see another pass here, fine. And that's going to be the same thing, is it? That, that pass distance is, is far too far too small it needs to be around about here or something okay set a good pass a name off and then you'll get a decent pass height let's hop across to the garter of the night uh otherwise known as night garter oh this is party night tonight party night on shadowlands by the way every friday 1700 uh bst or gmt gmt tonight that's some of these tunes going that's what i'm talking about and then we'll go flying and fly around place. So let's have a look, see what Night Guard is doing. Night Guard was in an F-18. Good. So let's get rid of uh, Mark. Let's have none. Tacfu is a good product. I'll give it that. I do use Tacfu quite a bit. Let's just see. Now, they're all, obviously, he's got to go out to stations. He may not be on station yet. Yeah, he went out here. This is a water feature. This is an outcrop. And there's the JTAC. There's a little Humvee there. So JTAC can sit in that on combined arms and can lay his bombs in for this dude here and we had a JTAC in there yesterday we just weren't using bombs that could be lays using dry munitions okay next time I will shut the curtains thank you yes right so he's just setting himself up and this is the thing you know you've got to identify the target you've got to identify the LOA however the simulation on this one was that these guys were in danger these is armor on the road and it was get the bombs down ASAP all right just give me some ordnance on there now so the JTACs are saying I'm danger close um, uh, um, these tanks are all over us, just bomb anything. So he can actually just pitch in whenever he wants. Look, we've got good height, we've got good speed. Uh, let's see what he does with his aim off then. I'll just move it forward until we get some weapon release. I think there's actually quite a bit of floating around here and having a chat, trying to get the wing on the target. And let's see, he's going to pitch in pretty soon. Right, here we go. So now we're seeing an oblique pull. So we've got good speed, good height, committing pause so he's committing i believe his i don't know what his loa was to be fair but he was told he could be in on any loa at all um so that's quite good and the way we do this as well we say if your loa is say 270 then as your nose comes through south that is a good time then to make that 90 degree turn onto the target okay so you can put a course bar on your loa line of attack and then a heading bug on your uh, heading that you need to hit. And when you hit that heading south, you can then pitch in, you know what I mean? Party night, Leet Giraffe, my man. We, what is gonna happen tonight? You're absolutely right. So we normally just get together, start some tunes going on, uh, have a chat. Someone might say something like, oh, I'm learning F-16 right now. And we go, an F-16, night. let's all get an F-16s. If we've got it, if you haven't got it, it doesn't matter because we've got loads of other jets on the server, as you know. And um, so I don't know what we're doing tonight, actually. It's a bit of a free-for-all. Normally, I set out something. Last week, every jet, it was, um, it was called Highlander. We had all the uh, Highlander music playing, all the Queen soundtrack and everything. It was mental. It was, it was like, so crazy. Who's that guy that does that? Lads, lads, lads on the train. Brilliant. It was the best night of my life. Um, brilliant. And it was... Uh, all jets got airborne and you've got 20 points if you had seven airfields. You've got 20 points if you if you touched an airfield. So wheels on the runway at an airfield. You've got 20 points. But if you shot someone down, you've got like 30 points. So everyone's all for themselves. Now you can hide, fly around, try and collect your airfields. And the guy that won actually did that. I think he collected airfields and he shot like two guys down. Um, other guys, I got one airfield. I shot one guy down, 50 points. And then I got shot down by a guy who was coming to the same airfield. So you've got to use the SA page. You can use F10 if you want to. You can stalk people. You can use your radar. But when I was getting shot at, I could. I knew the guy was. I knew. I got a radar on me. The RWR was telling me. So it was. Um, it was great. It was like every man for himself. You could see fights happening that you could join, kill someone, and then get out of there, and you take those 30 points away from the other guy. So um, that was that was really good fun. That was crazy. That was. And of course, the whole Highlander music is going at the same time, pumping. Um, so that was quite fun. So we do things like that, you know what I'm saying? And it could be anything. In fact, one of the guys on here, an American dude, uh, only flies F-16. He's a good dude and uh, he's a really nice guy. And he says one of the best flights for him on party night was in the Marianas. And I just led however many people there, like 20 or 30 people. We just It was the first time the Marianas map had come up and we just flew out from the Marianas. And there's like all these vol volcanoes, like vol volcanic islands and stuff. And we just went out um, looking at the volcano. And I said, right, I said... um. 
Okay, Night Guard, that's your volcano. Okay, um, Armax, that's your volcano. Norcat, that's your volcano. And so then these guys can, like, in their mind, build this imaginary scenario where they've got the speedboat there and they've got the house. But this guy on the wing, uh, this American dude, said it was... He did, he'd never done that in the F-16 before, of just flown out 30,000 feet with another with a whole bunch of other people, just got time to work the systems. It was like an hour 20 out, turn around, hour 20 back with a drop tank on. I mean, simple stuff, right? Simple stuff. But I think a lot of people don't invest time in the simple stuff in DCS. They want to go out and drop bombs um, and probably don't know how to do it. That's why I started the school, right? I'm about to get very blinded. I'm not a vampire, though. That, this proves I'm not a vampire, doesn't it? With this sun, I'm like creeping around here. I'm like... Oh, this way. Go this way. I'll just keep moving over here. I'll be like over there. Um, okay, so we're looking at Norca uh, Night Guard's pass. <clears throat> Let's have a look. So he's pulling in now. Good. He's going to bleak. He's pulling down. Use that positive G. Allow that speed to build. Now you want to put your lift vector above the target. That's a nice rollout. That's a, that's nicely done. 30 degrees. Hold it. Wings level. What is it? Well, I know what's going to happen with this before he's even done it. I've seen it with students for real. So I know what's going to happen. The velocity vector placement is short on this one. Now, I think he's going for the early crate there, but the velocity vector placement is short. So let's lengthen that out a little bit um, for the for the dive angle. You can put it really long if you want, if you want to, a nice high release, but the bomb's going to be less accurate, okay? So there's always factors to take into account. If it's a windy day, you want a short aim off. And of course, we would have figures for what aim off we would use for real. He put it on scale for 30 degrees, so put your velocity vector on 30 degrees. Now, we're going to see pitching in this, I think. I think we're going to see pitching as the speed increases. I might be wrong. We may see some lateral movement as well. Most students do it. Let's have a look. Although well, there's some lateral movement, but he's just lining up nicely. Again, a short aim off. Bring that velocity vector to 30. Hold on 30. Speed is high now. There's the bomb. Speed is high. And he's 4-5 above the ground. He could be taking fire now. That's fine. That's a, that's a nice, steady pass. Speed is hot. This jet doesn't like 500 knots. It takes a long time the Hornet, it likes 360 knots. To go, so to actually rotate along, along the axis, to rotate from here is better at 360 knots for the Hornet than it is at 500. 500 is going to go like this. It's going to be like taking age, a big age, the whole time you're being shot at, 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 as opposed to you're being shot at, you're, you've gone, you've gone. Okay, you're not being shot anymore, right? So, that's why we monitor speed down the dive, and for a Hornet, 360-400 should probably be a limit to actually get good rotation away from the ground. Let's go outside. I feel like a Twitch streamer. I should get one of those cool Twitchy names, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? Uh, if you're getting ads and stuff, I'm sorry, guys. I pay £12 a month for YouTube. I never see any ads, so I don't know how many ads come up. I'm just trying to, because I got because I got sacked, because I put the video out about the Air Force. Uh, well, I put lots of videos about, about the Air Force, didn't I? So I lost my job. So I have to monetize somehow because the wife wasn't the best pleased. And then I had a road accident, which was tripping. So don't do that. That was quite violent, actually. I was quite surprised. I kind of walked away from that one. Um, so yes, I do have to monetize some, some things. But I would advise you, just pay YouTube £12 a month and you, you can see any of them again. All right? Any of them again. Watch it there, Steve. We're talking weaponeering, mate. So there's the bombs come off then. And look at that. So he's taken a while to get back up and to climb away. But he's got good airspeed to do so. So he can now get up and away from the target. I'm expecting to see 60 degrees. I'm probably going to see 30 degrees. Bomb's coming off. And actually what you can do, you can, you can select the bomb. And you can be the bomb. You can be the bomb. It's the bomb. So let's have a look. We're the bomb. No, fam. No. We're dead. Anyway, I should grow up. I really should grow up. Uh, now let's go back a little bit so we can see his aircraft, shall we? And then we'll select the aircraft. I love, I love being the bomb. Well, you can be the missile. That's always a good one as well. When someone's the missile, attack view is funny like that. Another thing you can do for scoring guys in this, you can just wait for the bomb to come off. And what you can do then is you can tie the target to the bomb. So when we do scoring, when we do the actual range, I, I click the tickle container. I click on the bomb itself, and now we can actually get an accurate score, pretty much all the way in. I mean, you can be the bomb as I said, but we can get an accurate score. And it will, it will be on there for a little bit just after the bomb's hit. So we can say bang. Now we can go, looks like the bomb's going to be... Uh, he's obviously going for this one, I think. So let's tie that one. Uh, let's tie that one. Anytime, Davies. Yeah, it looks like he's going for that one. So 41 feet at 12. Okay, 12 o'clock. That's 12 o'clock from his flight path. That's how we score bombs in a clock code. 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, uh, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, okay? So whenever we go to academic weapons range, which precedes this sortie, we say your bomb was 40 feet at 12 or 300 at 12. If it's within 300 feet, especially if you've done weaponry, we count that as a direct hit. I am 
hiding from the sun here like this. I'm down here. Okay, down here. That's how we do that. Okay, so that wasn't a bad pass. I just think everyone's got an issue with aim offs at the moment. And uh, so we're going to have a look at that on the next one. And I think this is, I think Dump was having a similar kind of issue there with his one. So we just follow Night Guard around, see if he makes another approach on there. Puts the wings on the target. I would, if you could, you can actually overfly the same land feature as well, knowing that then when you tip in, you're about 30 degrees. If I put my wingtip on the target and I'm at 30 degree angular bank turn, by the time I turn in and pitch down, I might be steeper than that because, especially if I'm heavy in the tornado, for example, I'd, if I was dead on 30 degrees, I'm probably going to end up about 35 degrees, okay? And then some weapons instructor is going to say, were we flying 35 degree profiles? No, mate, we weren't. We weren't. We're flying 30 degrees, but I'm just a pilot, mate, all right? Not weapons instructor. I'm flying instructor. Shut up. Anyway, and then there'll be loads of insults, and then there'll be a fight, and then be violence on the squadron. Okay, so you can see his range, and people ask me, what, what range gives me 30 degrees? It's an irrelevant, mate. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the 4.5, 4.6. It's not relevant. None of that range is relevant. Okay, he might be going for the 270 today, so let's just see what he gets. I'd expect more of a wing on that. That's it. Put the wing on. Last check. Wing on. 30 degrees. I'm in. Night Garter in hot from the east. Cleared hot. Switch is live. Again, velocity vector over the top. At this point, then, we can adjust. I'll, I'll stop the stream in a second, because we can adjust. Right, so get get your wings level. Get your wings level. That's it. Square that bit away because it gives you more time to adjust. So square away the approach. Get to the target. Roll out. Applicate. Now I can adjust. I've just adjusted my line. Roll for line. Okay, now we can pull for that deflection, which we're doing gunning, but we're not. Now what I can do is set my pass height. Set my pass height. I'd say that pass height was short, but the lower we drop, the more chance of getting killed we have, but also the more accurate the bomb's going to get. So are you taking fire? They're containers, not tanks, but simulate they were tanks. If you're taking fire and the JTAC saying, mate, they're firing at you, have a nice long pass height, the bombs are going to be less accurate. The enemy gets a vote. The enemy gets a vote. It's one of those things. It gets a vote. Um, if you're not taking any fire, take a short pass height. I mean, do a lay down, you know, get some low drag bombs on there and, and do a lay down at 100 feet. It's much more accurate to do like that. But in this case, uh, yeah, he's doing the right thing. Good speed control. I'd like that to probably stay there, really. That's going to give energy to the bomb. That's going to make the bomb uh, obviously try and go through a lot more material better. But anyway, so that's going to give it more energy. Height's building then, and I would take a longer aim off for this. Again, like dump, I'd be up here somewhere. Again, it's... You've got to pick something on the ground. If you've got the map on you, you can measure it and you can go, right, for 30 degrees, I know it needs to be 1.2 kilometers and I can measure it. You probably wouldn't because we're CCIP and we're close air support. We're not academic bombing, okay? So let's see then. Let's have a look. Building. So hold that pass height. Get that jet steady, super steady. Speed's high again. That's going to cause problems with rotation. We know that. Bomb's coming off, okay? At seven. Target height for this one, I think, was three. So that's about 4,000. Yeah, so about 5,000 feet for that. And now I think the bomb's come off. Let's have a look. Yeah, has it come off? Negative. I think it has. No, it hasn't. Yeah, it has. Stores. I don't know which one he was going for on this one. But again, look at the rotation. He's, he can only get 5.5 G on that aircraft. And really, he wants about 6. You'd be limited anyway. Yeah, I expect a DH from that. I expect a DH, and it is DH because he's CCIP bombing. We're just trying to get the correct parameters. Um, what we could do briefly... So I just want to rewind this and show you what I would do in this case then. So as he tips in, he rolls out. Basically, I'll be faster than this. So I just get there. You're still like hanging. Just get there. Roll wings level. Roll wings level. Now. Thank you. Oh, I messed the tape right up there, didn't I? Right, let's go back. He tips in. There we go. And get the wings level. Bang. Right, this point, I'll be looking at it. My velocity vector wouldn't be there. It would be a bit longer. A lot of people try and cheat and put the velocity vector on the 30 degree line, okay, and, and then they say, oh, I'm on 30 degrees. Yeah, but you haven't got your aim off. So your aim off really wants to be, say, here. So in effect, right now he's in a 32 degree dive, 32 degree dive. If he puts his aim off here, then his dive angle is about 29 degrees. Let's pretend he wants to be, let's pretend that's the correct aim off, correct distance, we'll pretend. And let's say he sits there and goes on the 32 degrees, so I'm steep. I want 30 degrees. He needs to steepen. Immediately, that velocity vector needs to come down to 40 degrees, give it a couple of bananas, back up there, and you will find he's at 30 degrees. I wouldn't adjust it for 32 degrees. But if he was at 25 degrees, I would most definitely adjust that, okay? Because you're going to get very different parameters if you don't do that. The same with when you're landing. And I'll just draw you a quick diagram now, because what I have got um, ready to go is something... Ah, uh, here we are. So we use a, a whiteboard here, and this whiteboard was, was done by one of the dudes, good good man actually, one of the guys, Hero. So um, 
We've got a jet. Uh, we've got a better jet. We've got a jet on its side, which is better. And we've got a target. Okay, we've got a target here. So let me have a look at our. Let's go and get a car, which we're going to bomb a car. Take car down like a dog. Here we go. Woof. There's our car. Side view then. We're in our little jet here, right? Side view in a jet. So we want to bomb that car. And we want to do it using, say, 20 degrees. 20 degrees. So I've got to have an aim off. My aim off is going to be, I don't think I've got anything I can use for an aim off, but my velocity vector is going to be set long of the target. Don't think there's anything. Let's pretend an aerofoil will work. So we've got an aerofoil. This, we're going to pretend this aerofoil is that velocity vector you saw in the center of the screen there. And we're going to put our aim off. Oh, and he does that. Oh, no, it's because it, my, my, my mouse comes off it, I think. There we go. Look at that. We're going to put my aim off long of the target like that. And it's probably about a kilometer. And that is going to give me nice, accurate 20 degree things. Okay, 20 degrees. So I, I then tip into my target. I place my aim off here. And I look at it. And I, I read it. And it says, it says 10 degrees. I'm like, okay, it's 10 degrees. I want to be at 20 degrees. Okay, I want to be at 20 degrees. What do I do? I'm... If, I'm, if I want to be 20 degrees, uh, if I'm at 10 degrees and I want to be at 20, so I'm at 10 degrees now. So I look at it. I want to be at 20. I'm at 10. I'm shallow. So I need to shallow. Can't see the Morris Marina. Is that not showing? Oh, no, you're right. You can't. Dick Lord. Hold on. Stand by. Good point. Well presented. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. If I actually watch my own screen, then that would work out, wouldn't it? Hey, I'm in a small, I'm in a small box. Thank you for that. It's the Morris Marina, yeah. It's the bloody Mazda I wrote off. That's what it is. Crikey. Yeah, mate, you can bomb it. Actually, I can't save my life, so that's fair enough, isn't it? 104,000 miles on it. Um, so anyway, we're in a 10-degree dive now. We want to be in a 20-degree dive, all right? 20-degree dive. So, and of course, my name's there as well, isn't it? So everything's complicated. Streaming's complicated. How do these 16-year-olds do it? So I've got to make that steeper now. It was in 10 degrees. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Uh, it's got now one at 20 degrees. So what I'm going to do, I'm shallow, so I need to shallow. I'm shallow. There at 10 degrees. I need to shallow off. And I'd probably go to the horizon. And I would probably go to the horizon. I'd drive it in. Drive it in. Drive it in. That target would come down, 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 down. And when it reaches 20 degrees, I would do this and do that. Okay. And now I've got a 20 degree dive. Now, a lot of guys do this naturally when they're landing. They just don't realize they're doing it. Okay, and that makes a lot of sense because you want two and a half degree glide path, but the runway is at five degrees, so we just put a velocity vector beneath it. The runway will come up the HUD, and then we can reset for about two and a half degrees, and we're calling the gang. All right, everyone's happy. Okay, so I'm at 20 degrees now. Let's pretend I want a 20 degree dive. Okay, and so I want a 20 degree dive. I'm in a 20 degree dive. Sorry, I'm in a 20 degree dive, but I want a 30 degree dive. Let's pretend I want a 30 degree. So now I'm shallow. Uh, it's, well, we just did that one, didn't we? What are you talking about, Davies? Let's say you want a 30 degree dive. We're in a 30 degree dive. Let's do it like this, make it look like 30 degrees. Okay, so let's pretend we're in a 30 degree dive here. This is 30 degrees and we roll in and we like realize how steep we are. We're like, oh, we're steeper than a fish, mate. Fish are pretty steep, aren't they? And here's our little jet. We're like, oh, 30 degrees, mate. We rolled in 30 degrees. We want a 20 degree dive, not a 30 degrees. So we are currently steep Therefore, we must steepen. So we're steep. This is what happens when you steepen. We're at 30 degrees. We want that to be 20. We're steep. We're going to steepen. This happens. A bit of techno. Okay. And then the car comes up the head-up display. Head-up display looks like this, guys. Just to remind you what it is. I should get one of those, those Twitch overlays, shouldn't I? They could have like sponsor me here and all that kind of stuff. My Twitch channel. I haven't got a Twitch channel. Um, I'm not cool enough for that. Anyway, I'll get an OnlyFans. There we go. Oh, that's where the big money's made, isn't it? For an almost 50 year old dude, OnlyFans. So um, we'll, that, that car will start coming up here. Start coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. And when, of course, the target reaches 30 degrees or just below 30 degrees, I'll straighten myself out. There we go. Straighten myself out. Now I'm at, you know, now I'm at a 20 degree dive now, isn't it? when I reach 20 degrees. So now I'm at a shallower degree. So we're shallow. If we're shallow, we're shallow. If we're steep, we'll steep. Does that make sense? And we do it for landing. I'll just do one landing one, shall we? Let me get rid of this guy here. Uh, I want this guy to be smaller. Bigger, smaller, bigger. Gone. Go away. I know why. 
Right, okay, cool. I haven't got a runway, but we can just pretend by doing this. Pretty technical, isn't it? You know what I mean? I'm a genius. We configure then. We come in. I teach people to do a straight approach. We start configuring about... We start slowing down about 15 miles to configure at 12, uh, which means dropping your gear and your flaps. And then we're going to start descending at about 7 miles. And that's because the maths works out for a 3-degree glide path with 750 foot per minute in all aircraft, pretty much. And I teach that on the circuit teach. So we're coming in, driving in, driving in, driving in. Now, what you can do, if you're a corner gang, if you're a good dude and you understand this principle... Uh, but if you want a two and a half degree glide path, it looks like this. Hornet flies a two and a half degree glide path, right? So just drive in until the runway goes down the head-up display, down the head-up display, and it reaches the two and a half degree line. It's not revolution. And then you can start descending because you can feed anyway. And that looks like this. So I'll set a runway up. The This Hornet can be our run... Can be, that's a rubbish runway, Davies. This is what a runway looks like. That's the threshold of the runway. And then that's the end of the runway, and then we got little side bits, don't we? Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I am a genius with this drawing lark. So I'm coming in there with my aircraft, and I'm just driving in like this. Uh, so it's, it's like that: driving in, driving in, driving in, driving in. Runway's coming down as I'm getting closer, 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 closer. Runway's coming lower and lower and lower and lower. Gets two and a half degrees. Start my descent. Crazy. Let's pretend I can figure late though. So I can figure late and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going long. I haven't got my gear down yet. I'll just get my gear down. Wait for a gear. Okay, three greens indicating, full flap indicating, descending. My runway's there now. And I start descending on a five degree glide path, okay? Start descending on five degree glide path. Well, the Hornet doesn't want to land on a five degree glide path, okay? It needs to be 8.1 alpha, but ideally we want to be on two and a half, especially if we're on a PAR or something like that, uh, position approach radar or anything like that. So we're going to have to sort that out, you know what I mean? So what we're going to do then is we're going to have to sort it. We're going to have to bring that runway up the head-up display. What are we? We are steep. That's five degrees, not two and a half degrees. So we need to steepen. We're steep. We need to steepen, okay? So we're steep. Let's steepen a bit more. That's going to happen. What's that look like? Our velocity vector here will basically go down to about here. We're going to steepen, all right, like that. Steepen, steepen, steepen. And then what's going to happen is this, by doing so, this runway is going to basically going to, it's going to move up. It's going to move up, 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 up. We're going to steepen, hold it there, hold it there, hold it up. The velocity vector actually would be down about 10 degrees like that. And that would make the runway come up, come up, come up. When it gets two and a half degrees, bring the velocity vector back on to the threshold. The velocity vector doesn't move. And that's one of the problems with this head-up display. What I might get done is a head-up display without a velocity vector and then get a velocity vector made and I can move the velocity vector upside down. But the principle is the same. If we're steep, we steepen. The runway goes up, it's in the right place, then we come back. Okay, and if we're shallow, okay, we need to shallow even more. So it drives that runway down as we go in. Okay, and you can see we're steep and we come onto that. Once we reach two and a half degrees, we note that. So it's worth practicing for your landings. I see a lot of people coming in really steep. If you need to land accurately on a short runway, steepen the approach. And short runways will have three and a half degree approaches because of this reason, okay? Because you haven't got very long to stop. You, the more, imagine the steepest you can come in is at 90 degrees, isn't it? And if I come in at 90 degrees to that runway, I can pick exactly where I'm going to be. 90 degrees. I know exactly. My velocity vector tells me I'm going to be there. It's not healthy to do that, all right? Not healthy to do that, you know what I mean? So we, we don't land at 90 degrees. But there was a Harry mate once, a Navy mate, and I, I read an article he'd written, and the reason he'd written it was because he bounced off the end of a um, Mexi pad. I don't know, one of those pads they use. I can't remember what they're called. Someone write in the comments, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So uh, he bounced off one of those pads, and he wrote this article, and it was technical. It was brilliant about this phenomenon. I read it, and I was at, I was in training at Valley on Hawk at the time, and I was I was like, dude, that that guy's done some research. I think he went away and did some A level maths and, and some postgraduate degree shit, and got some people involved. And it was cray cray. It was great. And what he was saying was, and he's absolutely right. If we take a very shallow approach, so we take a very shallow approach, like um, a two degree glide slope. Well, where you can land on two degrees. This is the problem, he's red. The swathe on two degrees, the, the approximate landing area on two degrees, especially with a bit of a flare, can probably be about like this big on a two degree glide slope, okay? It's quite, it's two degrees, you know what I mean? It could be anywhere in there like that. I should have done that line there as well, um, red. Let me just get rid of that one and just draw them. I'm gonna make a red line, that line there. This is two degrees. So basically we say that's two degrees and in that two degrees, you can land anywhere in that kind of thing here. It's two degrees. If you think about it, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because think about one degree or half a degree. It's like, well, where? I've got a load of area I'm going to land on. 
if you come in at say five degrees which the harry would do in the late stages for the pad i think it was maybe even more than that maybe like seven degrees but it's a lot um i wasn't a harry mate so that's going to be here say he's coming in at like five degrees well now the accuracy element of this now you've got this instead can you all see that little line there so you've got a much smaller distance that aircraft is going to hit and of course 90 degrees it's like that isn't it you know what i mean so the higher you can come in at what are the dangers of doing so of course i hear you ask and you're absolutely right to ask it's like briefing stews at valley i love it um is the fact of course that can your undercarriage can it is it is it designed to come in at a five degree glide slope of course i mean is it you may damage your aircraft of course um it's high with some aircraft you can't see over the nose which is what flaps helps flap helps so that we can see over the nose so the steeper the glide path the harder it is um and of course, you've got to drive in for longer. But if also water, I would say standing water, steepen that glide slope if you can, because you really want to break that surface tension of the water with the wheels first, because your brakes aren't going to be of much use if you're aquaplaning down the runway. In the tornado, I used to steepen the end stage of an approach. You steepen it, steepen it, steepen it. Just, just go a bit long and then allow the jet to just drop. Like I was probably doing maybe five or six degrees when the jet actually hit the water on the runway and lost mouth was flooded the whole time. And it was windy as well. So. Hope that's helped. I've got nothing else. How long has the stream been? Um, there's a couple of people have watched it. It's actually quite nice of you. Thank you. I do appreciate that, guys. And I hope this. If there is anything uh, you think, actually, Tim, I've never understood this. 47 minutes is a waste of your time and my time. Okay? But technically, we did have a party, didn't we? So let's put some music up. But just nip in and out of these streams at different points. This is how they will end their Twitch stuff. And if there is something in the comments and you think, you know what? I've never understood rate versus radius. Or I've never understood slow speed fighting. Ask me, I'll do a video on it because it helps the school because then people come in the school and then um, we have more people in the school. As I said, this, this sortie was for about three people. So we need to get a few more people. I mean, I, this this one sortie was for three people. I've had 30 in there this week. Blowing my mind, to be fair. And of course, the party is always on a Friday. That's um, 1700. We just work something out. People will come in and out all night long. Um, so there's a NTTR is massive now. The school here is massive. We're probably going to base ourselves out of nothing kills you here, by the way. Base ourselves out of Nellis for Primo and for um, Extremists as well. So for the we call it advanced, but what would be basic jet training is Primo, and then the advanced weapon stuff is um, TAC weapons is the Extremists. Okay, if you do want to join, or guys, I say to people come in experiential. It's like ten dollars a month. You know what I mean at the moment. I know that's I know that matters a lot, guys. But think about the mental health of what you're doing. All right, it's um. I got people joining just to watch this stuff I do here, just to watch the flights. I stream every lesson we do, all right? You make some pretty good friends on there. And if you're struggling with something, you just type it in. Hey, guys, anyone want to come fly with me? And uh, someone will take you up, practice your formation. Uh, we do a lot of formation work, obviously, because that's what jets do. They never go anywhere by themselves. Um, a lot of weaponeering, of course, in the extremists, a lot of BFM. So, uh, and a lot of uh, navigating and everything else and stalls, spins, all that kind of It's the whole syllabus from Valley. It's the syllabus from Valley. Um, yeah, exactly that. So I would bring it up. You know where it is. Go to go to fastjetperformance.com. It's it's there on my website. In fact, seeing as I'll just wrap it off to 50 minutes or whatever. If I just get my website up right now, fastjet, because the syllabus syllabi are there and the program is there. And then you can, here's the website now, just bring it up. Can you see that? There we go. Right. Jet, flying, sky, um, things, website. Happy? Everyone's got that? Cool. Let's go for down here. Here we go. You join either through Patreon, take straight there. Well, join you always join through Patreon, but you can say right, I want to I want to join Tim's flight school. I want my bit of instruction, but I don't want to pay thirty seven pound. That thirty seven pound a month, by the way, is directly linked to a gym membership in my local gym. If they put that up, okay, um, then I put it up. If they t bring it down, they bring it. I bring it down because it's a municipal gym. It belongs to the um, the government. You know what I mean? So I just I just literally copy that. It's a gym for the mind, 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 mind. So I want to learn more about, I don't want to learn more about that, Tim, actually, mate. I want to learn more about the experience here because I want to come in and see whether this is right for me. I don't want to commit to it because actually I've got to buy an F5. That's all you've got to buy, by the way, is one F5. You could do Hornet later. And the F5, in fact, I've managed to kind of talk ED, Eagle Dynamics. I haven't talked him into it, but I think what's going to happen, if I can get my way, is that we're going to make the F5 um, an aircraft that we kind of maybe, maybe do something with the price on so you know what i mean so it doesn't cost you as much to come into the school you don't need the nttr map first off you just need corkses which is free that's where the parties happen whoop, whoop, whoop. okay mostly or well, might go somewhere else tonight so i've clicked on experience here learn the secrets there's some videos guys you get all these all these knee boards they come with it don't worry about it 
And then you say, I want to view the course team because I don't trust you, mate. Even though you did 20 years in a majesty government, and even though you're now enemy of the state. Bad. There's the primo. All right, I'll talk you through this. I'll do a whole other stream on that where I'll answer questions and stuff on it. And then we're at the back end of primo at the moment. So if you did want to join, a great time to join in the next couple of weeks because we'll start again. I'll take a week off when we finish because I'm just in a, a world of pain. And then we start at the beginning here. And then the extremists, do the primo first before the extremists. It's a bit more complicated. But you see radar work. We're about to start. We're doing CAS this week. Then radar work on F-18 next week uh, and all the way through the back end of the course there. You can start primo anytime. Start extremists at the beginning though. And this is where we tend to run. A little bit flexible. But um, you know, I tend to be around during the middle of the days as well here, obviously. Uh, there you can see the times there. It's not going to work out for everyone. But Sunday session, if you miss a session, we sometimes put it on the Sunday. That can come forward to 2 o'clock sometimes as well. Don't clash with the Grand Prix. Have a think about it. Anything you need, guys, whack down the comments then. I know I know they always do it, don't they? Subscribe, hit the comments. I'm not doing it for that reason. I'm not doing it for the reason. I couldn't care less if you comment. But if you have any ideas, if you say, Tim, those times flexible or whatever, or can you help me out, whatever, um, with something, then can I come and visit, that kind of stuff, then let me know, guys, all right? And um, make it, I'll make it happen. And you just sign up on Patreon there. It's pretty simple. And then, uh, yeah, view the course and some reviews and stuff like that from... from the lads, lads, lads. Guys, ridiculous to have an hour-long stream, isn't it? I'll try and put some timing things in this, in the descriptions then, for guys coming in. And then uh, they can, yeah, we could do some BFM if you want. If you want to die again, if you want to die again, Lockie, mate, we'll do some BFM. You know what I mean? You, I love, uh, Lockie writing that comment. It means everyone is going to go for that dude now. Lockie got lucky in the, lucky Lockie in the last um, last party. He's got lucky, he doesn't get shot, shot down because basically I shot everyone else down that was going to shoot him down. And then... And then we all got shot down. And so he, he, he thinks he's God's thing to all BFM now, which he probably is, in fact, because I'm most definitely not at the moment. I never get a chance to fly because I'm teaching the whole time. Uh, lads, 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 lads down the valleys. Guys, I'm going to stop stream, but thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Um, anything you need, obviously comments, Tim at performance.com. The community is lovely, guys. I'm not just saying that. It's a very nice community of people, all aviation enthusiasts. We've got airline mates in there, bizjet mates. We've got students, got IT guys. I don't know what trade we don't have in there at the moment, to be fair. People doing all cra crazy stuff. You've, your instructor is a guy that obviously is now currently enemy of the state, having been sacked out of a defence job recently and then had a massive car crash. So I'm living on borrowed time, guys. Living on borrowed time. We've got everyone in there, all right? Everyone. Right, I'll bring the stream down. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm about to get like, ah. That's, that's my new profile pic, you know what I mean? Ah. Brilliant. All right. I'll see you guys tonight. It's uh, 1700. I'll try and get something together and um, we'll go and explore. Appreciate it, guys. Oh, I'll do that thing. We do an outro. That's it. Yeah, check that out. I'm like a Twitch streamer.